Good morning. Wel welcome to Groton Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, an open and affirming church. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journeys, you are invited and welcome here always. We have announcements today. We are pleased to announce that in-person worship will resume on January 30th at 10 a.m. We're looking forward to having everyone gather in the sanctuary once more. Videos and live streams will still be made available for those who wish to continue quarantining. The annual business meeting is currently slated for January 30th after worship. This is an in-person meeting. The agenda, call to meeting, and report were emailed to members on January 18th. If you did not receive one, please contact the office. A small number of print copies will be available before the meeting. The prayer and Bible study have been combined into one meeting that starts at 11 a.m. every Thursday via Zoom. Please contact the office if you are not getting the announcements and would like to attend. And finally, your pledges. As we prepare for the January 30th business meeting, we would appreciate if you would submit your pledge card if you have not already done so. And now please join me in the call to worship. In the beginning, our God created the light, Morning. broke open on the first day. This God of ours sent the light. Jesus, Jesus the Christ came to the world's people. Morning light opens for us. God's light illumines our, our lives and opens us to worship this day. And now we have the prayer of invocation. Please join me in saying it. O oh God, who gives us strength when we feel weak, we gather to hear your word, sing your songs, and give you praise. We know that you are always with us, and we are grateful. Help us to live our lives in ways that show you are near. Thank you for your presence and constant care for us in worship and in each day of our lives. Please stand and sing the Gloria. Now we'll sing, Morning Has Broken, hymn number 53 in the Chalice Hymnals. Good. 
Well, good morning. And greetings to you all this day. I give thanks for the chance to be together in worship as we are doing so, and we invite you now to move into a time of considering the gifts that you will offer to continue the ministry of Jesus here. We share from what we have and from who we are as a sign of our desire to bring good news to the poor. May these gifts bring light to those in need and put the joy of the Lord in their hearts and ours as we continue to serve in Jesus' name. Thank you. And I invite you now to share in the prayer of dedication as found in your bulletins for the gifts that you are offering. O God, God of all gifts, we, we join with Jesus in proclaiming, proclaiming the year of your favor. Bless, bless our gifts and, and bless us as we, as we seek, seek to bring joy and comfort to those who are unknown to us and to those who are near and beloved. beloved. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And now I will invite you to be uh, those who hear a children's message for this day. And as I was pondering it in light of the scripture passages and all that is here for us right now, one of the pieces I'm going to ask you is when you were a child, did some other people have thoughts about what you should be doing when you grow up and how, what you should pursue? And I remember that there was a particular person in my life who thought that I should be an airline stewardess. And I thought, okay. And I thought, well, maybe not, but I'm glad I'm not right now with all that's going on on those planes. But there are others I thought, um, I don't know if you know it, but when children were really young a long time ago, if they showed signs of trying to write or draw with their left hand, that their hand was swatted and that they were told that that was not proper, and that they had to learn how to write and do everything with their right hand. Think about the confusion that that must have caused inside their brains, because if they were created to be left-handed, they were trying to go against their brain's messages, but they learned how to do it. They learned how to write and, and draw. But when they were given permission to actually do so with their left hand and follow through with that, all of a sudden their creativity could come out in a different, in the way that probably it should have. And so I just use these examples as ways to consider, um, we're gonna go into the passage from St. Paul where he's asking each person, what part of the body do you think you um, have the greatest, where do your gifts come through? And if you're told that what you're doing isn't quite the way it should be, you kind of silence your gifts. And so I hope that you will hear this message and realize that maybe you actually have a gift that you know you have and people were not necessarily applauding you, but we're going to be, I'm going to be a voice to say, keep on going and seeing what comes out because that creativity might be exactly what the world needs. And so may God bless you as you ponder 
all that is with you in particular this day. Thank you. And so now we move into a time of sharing our joys and concerns in the lives of the church family. And I don't know if there's any particular prayers that those who are present here would like to offer. I know that we have prayers for the first responders as they continue to care for people who are perhaps on the roads right now dealing with the uh, snow and the ice and may they have the ability to have patience in the, in the help, but especially for being there. But also the first responders caring for the people dealing with medical concerns, not only with COVID, but also uh, accidents and medical you know, crises that happen and for the patients that they have to continue to have even though they are exhausted and sometimes showing up for the seventh day in a row. And so for the caregivers, we give thanks. Are there any other particular prayers that we want to lift up this day? Peace on earth? Peace on earth for sure. Okay, let us now then, I know that there are some prayers that are in your heart and soul, and so I move into a time of silent prayer for you to lift them up to God. Well, holy and gracious God, God of all seasons, we pray to you this day when we are in the midst of what is here a small winter storm and can travel safely, but we're mindful that there are others who are receiving many more inches of snow and may be stuck on the highways, and we pray for the first responders who are there to help them regain the ability to move, but keep them strong, help them to find ways to solve the difficulties. But for those who are hunkering down in their homes and enjoying perhaps a fire, or perhaps feeling frustrated because they're there without any food or heat, we pray that you will be present to them and help them to know that even in the midst of that, they are not alone. We go forward this day being mindful of some of the scripture passages that we will be hearing, that there are people down through the ages who have gone through the challenges of life, sometimes through deep waters and sometimes through fires. We know that there are people who have lost their homes to fires recently and to the floods and to the earthquakes. And so we pray for those who've lost everything And yet they have neighbors who have showed up with a hot meal and presents and blankets and ways to comfort them. And so guide us now as we continue to keep the light of Christ shining here as we go through this time of the quarantine and rejoice that we will soon be able to gather again together in this sanctuary. Strengthen us in our walk together. Help us to be those who hear your message coming through, that the darkness may be here for a while, but the sun will rise again to take us into the new day. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be. Help us to be patient as we wait for the revealing. Lead us, Lord, in the teachings of Jesus. And guide us now as we join in sharing the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy will be done done on earth earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us move into singing the hymn titled Spirit, which is number 249 in the Chalice Hymnal. Thank you. Give to joy. 
Please listen to the words from the Old Testament for this week. First, Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, and yet their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And Doris, I'm going to ask, could you do the 1 Corinthians reading and I'll do the Isaiah because it's in my sermon. Okay? Okay, so I should do the 1 Corinthians now? Yes, please. please. We're now going to do the uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 to 31. Yes, thank you. The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience. Signs and wonders and mighty works. How have you been worse off than the other churches, except that I myself did not burden you? Forgive me this wrong. Here I am, ready to come to you this third time. No, 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 that's not chapter 12. First Corinthians Oh, I'm 12? in Second Corinthians. <laughs> See, this is why... Sorry. I mark things ahead of time. I know, I know. That's all right. Well, fortunately, Dick can edit this out, I hope. No, we can do just fine. This is just fine. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 31a. Yes. For just as the body is one yeah. and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? 
But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were but a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, given the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice with it. Now, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God is appointed in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. And may the Lord add his blessing to this reading from his holy word. That was well. It was fun to listen to you read. Yes, thank you. And so in, keep that in mind as we go forward with our concepts of who we are as the body of Christ here in Groton. And let us hear these words from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 4, beginning with verse 14. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon him, and then he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And so may God add a blessing upon our hearing of these words of scripture to guide us this day in my reflections. And so as we go into this sermon today, which I have changed the sermon title to In the Bulb There is a Flower, to talk about some concepts that I have for this congregation today, I want to read the last verse of the hymn we just sang. It says, God, you call from tomorrow you break, break ancient schemes. From the bondage of sorrow, the captives dream dreams. Our women see visions, our men clear their eyes with bold new decisions. Your people arise. To be honest, I don't need to preach any other sermon. It's all right there, what I want to say today. It's beautifully said in that him. And so for um, this morning, as I have been pondering what to share this week, I just invite you again to hear the message that Jesus proclaimed in the Gospel of Luke. I have come to proclaim the good news to the poor and to set the captives free. Hold that within you. What is the good news for us today? And so as I have been reflecting and pondering 
what to do. I'm at a point in my journey with you, and as you've heard, I'm a little bit frustrated that you're not all here in the sanctuary to, to join with me. I want to just share that as we go into next week, and I know we're going to go into an annual meeting and some other things, I am at a point where I realize the importance of what I can be focusing on with you now. As we are wrestling with what to do as a congregation in light of the COVID numbers, the fears, the economy, the complexities of life right now, I personally feel like we are in what I will call a COVID cocoon. Or we are like buds that are inside of a flower bulb, just like that picture that is on the front of your bulletins is from the bulb that I have at home and the flowers at home. We are just waiting for the conditions and the timing to be just right so that we can burst out of the bulb and start to grow and blossom. I feel like we as a congregation have been doing the nitty-gritty work. You were doing some of that with, well, with all the pastors prior to me. But this, during this time of COVID, you've been doing it in your separate homes during what I will call a cocooning time. And during this time, you may not have recognized what you've been doing, but now that you've been expressing your impatience to get back into a more normal flow of life, I'll tell you that there's some imagery with butterflies that says that in the last stage before a caterpillar comes out of the cocoon as a butterfly, they have to exercise their wings against the cocoon in order to strengthen themselves up so that when they come out, they can fly. And so that's, I think that's what's happening right now, believe it or not, or in the language of flowers, that there's this time of gestation where the, where the bulbs are, uh, the, 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 the flower is beginning to want to grow and has to break through the layers of the bulb so that the stalks can come up and so it can start blossoming. We were doing so well this fall and I, the energy and the, and the flow was so good and we were all enjoying each other's company and I am truly sensing the impatience as I get some emails, and I'm going to say that's a good thing, okay? I'm here to encourage you in claiming this impatience and this, this hunger to be together as a step of exercising your wings so that we will be able to fly together when we come back. Can you name some of the gifts that you have been discovering while you've been going through this time of the cocoon? But I do want to shift now because I want to use the imagery of the, the flowers because I was spending time looking at that amaryllis plant that my sister sent to me in early December. And of course, all I have is this pot with you know the dirt and something is underneath it and I don't know what's gonna be there. And I was thinking about this closing hymn as I was looking at those eight blossoms that have emerged from that one bulb. And so if you have the words in front of you, it's hymn number 638. I want to just read the first line. It says, in the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree. In cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. And on this day, the, the words, in the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. And I'm going to go to the second verse. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. And so I'm going to be that voice to say, you know, having watched these flowers emerge from this bulb, I am very conscious of this idea of there are things that are unrevealed until their season. The composer of this song wrote it knowing that as it was visible in the flowers in the, in the natural world, so it is within each one of us. We each have gifts with which we were born, but they cannot be revealed until their season. I'll just tease you all to think about what happens when we were children. Some of us as females were playing with dolls and toys. But all of us, whether we're male or female, we're learning how to read and write and think. As we went into the teen years, we were going advanced in our studies, but also learning about relationships and how hard they can be. Yes, the, the joys and the sorrows and frustrations. If we had the opportunity to go into college, we had much there. But think about being a young person, uh, whether you were a parent 
or married, dealing, and I'm going to just say from my perspective, dealing with teenagers and what a joy it is right now to be able to listen to my children, my son in particular, dealing with his teenagers and coming back and asking me some questions. And it's just been fun. But the, but the evolution of how we recognize gifts that we didn't even know that we had until we get to that point. It wasn't until I was 40 that I had the season where I heard a call to go into ministry. It truly was unrevealed. Trust me, it was. But for each of you, have any of you had an experience where you all of a sudden at a certain age recognized that there was something nagging at you that wouldn't let you go? It didn't mean that it was going to be an easy thing to pursue. And it wasn't something that others might have expected you to do, but the passion would not let you go. Have you been able to follow it and nurture it if not, I'm going to tease you and to say, do you know what might be still nagging at you? Do you realize how God is at work in each one of us, helping us to get past our fears so that we can pursue the gifts and develop them in order to help us all get to some kind of recognition that we don't just do it alone, that sometimes God is at work in ways that we don't understand? This is where I'm going to bring in the Isaiah 45 passage. Hear these words, and again, think about the fact that these were written almost 3,000 years ago. That's what's mind-boggling for me. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes. And so as I read this, as I learned as a spiritual director, every time I use the word you, put your own personal name in there. I have come to open doors before you and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I'm going to say our defenses, our personal defenses, okay? I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places. Not quite sure why that has to be, but that's the way it is. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches that are hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. Interesting, isn't it? My goodness. I call you by your name and I surname you though you do not know me. Prior to that in Isaiah 43, we have these words. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and who formed you, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. And when you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you, for I am the Lord your God. Because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you, I give people in return for you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Now I've read those words and asked you to put in your own name, but I also want to apply them to the larger congregation. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God. I call you by your name, though you do not know me. Oh, my. Oh, my. God is in our midst, and maybe we didn't even know it. God has not left us alone. God has not left us, though we may think so. I call you by your name. I will break down the bars of iron to reveal the treasures of darkness. And I'm going to say hidden within your heart, waiting to be revealed. And this is not just for our own personal gain, though it may feel so at the time. But it is truly in service so that we can help bring the good news out into the world, is it not? As we are engaged in this walk with God, our wells of love and compassion are filled so that we can turn around and share it with others. 
the treasures that if Jesus were here in front of us today, he would be asking us, do you see it now? Do you see it now? As we all know, our life journeys are not always a clear path forward. As we unfold and see that which is being revealed, we may have to go through the waters and the rivers and the fires to be able to get clarity about who we are in God's eyes and then be able to move into a new walk with God, a new chapter, I should say, with God in that way. It may not bring us the wealth and prosperity we hope for, but we will find the wealth in our own spirit as we begin to see and live out this way in the world. If we follow in Je- with Jesus, we will be set free from the merry-go-round wheel of striving according to society's games and find ourselves standing in the light of God and the love of God and experience that embrace and be welcomed and begin to hear some new visions and dream dreams. We may discover that we will not have to prove ourselves anymore like we thought we had to. But then after these experiences, the hard part comes, as we were talking about this morning. We may not be welcomed by our family members the same way anymore. Because our lives have changed, and because we've changed, our presence invites them to consider what's going on in their own lives. And that's not always fun. And so again I ask, will we follow in Christ's ways or other teachings? And so as we look at the words of Isaiah and think about what he was saying that that Jesus picked up in this passage from Luke, it's actually from Isaiah 61, which is a really fascinating passage to look at right now. Think about the fact that Isaiah believed that he was called to share the message to bring release to the captives and to set people free. From what to what is one understanding back then And what Jesus was offering, from what to what, is very different. It was not from human bondage to another kingdom, as Isaiah was talking about, but from the earthly bonds that cultures use to identify us so that we can understand spiritual freedom. We move from serving others to gain praise or grades or a salary to an inner freedom with God and find the peace that passes all human understanding. This is not easy to understand and to experience. It is all there for us to understand and know. And as we do this walk with God, we can choose to bring to light the gifts that have been hidden, waiting for us to bring them to light. Just like the flowers on the front of the bulletin, we're waiting in the bulb of this amaryllis plant for the right time to blossom. And so I'll move to... uh, just include the letter to the Corinthians where St. Paul knew that he had to figure out how to help the people move from being in fear and trembling that they were not good enough and not doing the right things to help them to understand, because they were not Jewish perhaps, but also because they weren't doing things the way that they were told that they had to do them. He had to help the people in Corinth hear this vision that he heard so that he was trying, and he was trying to put it in bodily terms so that hopefully they could understand it in different language and not just have to try to grasp what the orthodox language was saying. He wanted them to experience God's love and know that it was there for everyone and not just those who understood the Jewish teachings. It was for all peoples. He had heard the words of Jesus that are quoted here in the Luke passage, the message that was issued long ago with Isaiah and not fully understood. And that he was here now offering the same message and that Jesus was saying this was his calling as well. And Paul knew that the people were not hearing it all. And he so wanted them to hear it so that they could be transformed and rejoice and celebrate. For us today, God is wanting us to hear it so that we will be able to be set free and rejoice. As we go into 2022, and we go into these days of winter and the challenge with the COVID and the public news, it matters if we can spend time with this message and grasp all that is there. It's a different way to live, yes, but I want to ask a question in a different form. As we listen to the daily news, what happens to our spirits? 
Do we get rocked as we listen to the COVID numbers, to what's going on in the politics, to the threat of war from Russia? Do we consider then, as we listen, but wait a minute, I know what ground I'm standing on. I know what ground I'm standing on. It is not sifting sand. I'm standing on the rock of Jesus, is the way some people say it. I'm standing on solid ground of faith, just like the plants that are rooted in good solid soil, in the love of God as those who have followed the teachings of Jesus. The ground of faith that is nurtured by God's love and forgiveness and compassion. And I can take the winds that are blowing right now. Sometimes Jesus spoke in words, and sometimes he just spoke in silence. As I was reminded, as I looked at the flowers this morning, we each have a lifespan on this earth, and the question is, what do we do with it? Particularly as we hear these different stories. Do we chase after the moments where we will be satisfied because of our love for power, as we're witnessing some? Or will we learn to live from the power of love that is rooted in the ways of compassion and grace and forgiveness and share that with others? We know it matters. It doesn't matter where we live or what kind of work we do or who we are. But it matters if we share that love. What do you choose this day as for me, I will follow Jesus and serve the Lord. May God bless us all as we go forward and consider our own choices. But man, I hope you'll walk with me and share that love and peace and forgiveness. Amen. And now, I invite you to look at the hymn number 638 in the bulb there is a flower and join with me. As we go forward this day, let us hear these words from St. Teresa of Avila. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he sheds compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. 
Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world, and yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, and you are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. And so let us go forward knowing that it is through each one of us that God's love and peace are revealed, but collectively imagine what we can do together. May God bless us all. In Christ's name, amen.